you're doing a choreography, you're singing live, it's a different stage. Um, and you really want to impress the audience. There's so much running through your mind. And then all of a sudden, you don't have a microphone. You need to be really aware of what the other members are doing. And that mic exchange between Stell and Ken was so slick. It's like it was meant to be. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, Horever here. I hope that you are all doing well. I could have sworn that I had exhausted all Love Goes content, but you're telling me I've not seen this. This is SB19. This is Love Goes, the original version dance practice. Now, the watch bar at the bottom isn't red. That tells me I haven't seen it. I'm not convinced. But I'm going to go through this. This is not the only thing that I'm watching today. I am also going to finally watch them perform Love Goes Live with only three microphones. You've been raving about that. And I know they're absolute pros. They've been hit with all sorts of different scenarios and circumstances. They're going to make it work. They're going to kill it. I'm really excited to see what that's all about. However, should we revisit this? Am I so lucky that I missed something? <laughs> I don't wanna say goodbye, never say goodbye. Hmm. Maybe I didn't watch this. Whoa. We don't ever want to say goodbye. Love goes, love goes, love goes. Watching stuff like this really makes me think about how boxed in I can be when I see glossy music videos. Um, the amount of work and effort that goes into putting anything like that together, which ends up being only three, four minutes, um, the choreography, the costumes, everything. So I'm really appreciative of any of these sorts of dance practices that we get to see, especially them in casual wear, because it takes the focus away from their visual for a second and really onto their lines. And we know that their lines and their bodies, they match so well, don't they? They're really, really striking moments in this choreography that I love. I've been too many places and everywhere I go I can see all the traces. The happiness written in both of our faces. For so embrace the fact that reality made this. Erase it. And I hate this. Oh God, I hate this. Every time I close my eyes, all I see is your face. I miss your kiss, the warmth, I members. I feel the pain and it's insane. How they want you take this? Ever since my love has gone away. Such a good song. Away. Every single thing has turned to gray. Still, I don't want to say goodbye. And I can still feel you. You took my heart with you. No, I can't live without you. All I need is your love. So won't you take me with you? Because I don't know what. You know what I really love about their dancing? It's never like they're fighting to be alive. They're fighting for their breath. Um, this is stuff that just, it's slick. They're really owning all of the movements. I really, really love their transitions. They seem to travel quite a bit. Like if you were to just put a marker on one particular person and follow them throughout the choreography, you'll see that they do a lot of movement and that everybody at one point or another gets to be in each of the spaces. It's really, really interesting. <laughs> This is dynamic choreography. You're the one I love, the only one I'll never say goodbye. Oh, 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 I love it. I don't even have to, we told us all nights, cause the brightest stars are the ones that live in the rise, but love dies. And see, this is the thing that they didn't just think, oh, 18 want to see 
lots of dancing so we'll just stuff a whole ton of useless choreography i know that's really harsh um useless choreography into the song and jam pack it and it will look really impressive and slick but they really thought about it there have to be moments in this where certain members rest whilst others take the lead and the energy needs to keep flowing i think that when you have all five dancing all the time you're kind of it's a danger area because if somebody is injured if something doesn't go quite right it's really really noticeable what you do by pairing people off and breaking things up the way that they do the way that they did in what the way they're doing in this the way they still do in gento as well it's kind of like their signature style it allows other members to rest because let's not forget they're going to be singing this live oh, how could you Take my heart with you No, I can't live without you Well, I need this, your love So won't you take me with you Cause I don't know what to do You're the one I love The only one I'll ever say you love This can't be true Why did I lose you? Say goodbye, never say goodbye, cause I can still love you. You my heart with you. Do I get this? Freestyle, I like it. I just love this song so much. And the thing is, does this go on to do anything else? Oh. I love it. I love it so much. I mean, this song, I keep saying to you, one day I'm going to try and rank my top five. And then in return, I'll expect you to rank your top five SB19 songs. But I actually sit down to make a list and I'm like, I, it's just really tough. It's really, really hard. Now, they don't have like 100 songs out there. However, the songs that they do have, <laughs> it's really hard to rank them. Um, each and every single song is pure gold, in my opinion. Now, there was a really interesting moment right towards the end of that, where they all come into a line. Was it here? You take me with you, cause I don't know what to do. You're the no, one past I... It. I think it's just I after this. You. I don't want to say goodbye, never say goodbye, because I can still you. It's after this. So you know how songs typically, they get to the latter half and you build up to the climax of the song, a potential key change. Um, I've noticed with SB19's choreography, whether they're choreographing it or not, or the people that work with them know them incredibly well, that they started to get them into this area, into this trend, and now it's kind of an SB19 signature. So right here, they were, they've done this slightly differently to how it's been done in the other part of the song. They suddenly come right forward into a straight line and they give us the same sort of choreography with little tweaks and it's presented to you in the way that this is the climax of the song. You can really tell. If you're not listening to it, you can look at it and you can really tell this is it. Okay. They also do this in Gento in Crimson. They also do it in Watt. And there are probably a ton of other songs of theirs that I can't name right now, but they do it. And I've only ever really noticed that in SB19. So there's this thing, there's this pattern that they're kind of following, this signature SB19 spin that they're putting on 
to not just their songs not just their vocals but to their choreography as well and it's really nice to be able to spot that that actually they started weaving this if you think about sewing they started weaving this right at the beginning of their careers and they're still doing it to date and i just love that you're able to notice these patterns they get cleaner and slicker and more in your face but it's really nice to see that they were they were doing this that they were thinking that much in depth i really love that i mean i think if i i'm talking about what again for goodness sake <laughs> let's talk about love goes but if i think about the music video of what if i sit sat down and watch that today i will still pick stuff out of it that i have missed that i've not noticed that's how much metaphorically um symbolically that is just inbuilt into that song that choreography that music video that on a first initial watch you're not going to be able to pick up and again another thing that i've noticed about sp19 and their dancing when i think about a lab there were some really beautiful moments in there where they do lots of finger movements lots of hand movements that are symbolic of fire it's really simple but it's so effective. And then I saw them do it in something else. Now, I cannot tell you what it was, what performance it was, what song it was, but it was a different song. And then suddenly they do a similar sort of thing. And I was like, I was absolutely blown away that they managed to do the same thing. Now, it's not them being literal with their movements. It's still arty, but it's really nice for them to allow burning fire. Why would you not put something like that? in there it's just so incredibly clever now please can we stop talking about this i could go on forever it's boring i know let's move on to this three mic performance <laughs> Okay, I need to have a quick look. Something went wrong backstage before they'd even got here, right? And so they had to just perform with three mics. That was it. It wasn't that during the performance they noticed the microphones weren't working. I can kind of see Justin doesn't have anything in his hand right now. So yeah, we're going with that story. Look at Ken's hair flying. <laughs> Switch of the mic. That was so slick. Do you know, I was thinking maybe just one member's going to pass their mic around. Um, and then I was trying to think ahead. It just goes to show, like, I'm not even performing this. This is not my song. But there's so much that goes into this. You're doing a choreography. You're singing live. It's a different stage. Um, and you really want to impress the audience. There's so much running through your mind. And then all of a sudden, you don't have a microphone. You need to be really aware of what the other members are doing. And that mic exchange between Stell and Ken was so slick. <laughs> it's like it was meant to be. <laughs>
If you hadn't have told me, I would never have even noticed. I mean, somebody really eagle-eyed had to spot that because I'm just so taken away with how beautiful they sound with their raw voices um, singing live that I just didn't even realise they must have swapped that mic about eight times and I've, I've spotted about four. <laughs> If you hadn't told me, I wouldn't have even noticed. I have to say, I really feel for Justin and for Josh at the end, because you could see that at that moment, they kind of come in with those vocals and it wasn't there. The thing is that Pablo really just took hold of that situation. Leader stepping in, right? He had to. They're really lucky, actually, that it was Love Goes and it wasn't one of their ballads because they harmonize a lot and they back each other up a lot. They're lucky that obviously they had the backing track with the backing vocals already recorded on it. However... You could really feel this like oomph of energy, especially from Josh and from Justin, because they didn't have, it was really obvious at the end that they didn't have microphones. Um, and they were really doing their best to like lift that energy up so that nothing feels empty, nothing feels missing. And I really love how they come together as a team. They're meant to be, aren't they? I would actually really, on an interesting front, like to see something go wrong with a ballad. Somebody has told me, Tilaluha went wrong at some point. Wait right there. I'm going to go and find it. I'm back. Let's talk about this now. Oh, no. I'm absolutely distraught for them. But also, on the side, I just want to say they sound absolutely heavenly. The fact that Stell kept going, there were the exchange of glances. Pablo, as a leader, took it upon himself. He was like, no, we're going to power through. There was nothing they could do because the backing track with that initial uh, couple of words came back in again. They had to stop. Ken picked it up really nicely. I didn't think it was going to go wrong again. This is absolute disaster, but they sound so good. <laughs> it's like I wanted this to happen, but I also don't want this to happen to them. Can you hear how amazing he sounds? They should just sing. You can tell this is early days and had this happened today, you know that the audience would have sung the entire song, even if the music ended up coming on again. Um, they, they would have just carried on and 18 would have handled this situation for the boys. That's the kind of fandom this is. <laughs> Straight 
straight from heaven. I like this version. They should have carried on going. I love that. So Pablo is leader and Josh as sub leader. Um, between them, they kind of make this decision to do stuff. But I have to say that Ken was fantastic to keep on going. And he hesitated for a little bit, but actually he didn't hesitate. He was just timing it out like that ticker in his head kept going and just absolute pros. Does it ever come back on again? Ah, pasensya na po sa konting problema pero inaayos na po namin. Pero guys, uh, bago po tayo tumuloy ng performance, maaari lang po sana lahat po tayo huwag tayo magtulakan. Huwag po sana magkaroon ng sakin ka kasi guys, naiipin po yung iba nasa harap at nasa likod. Nasa gitna. Huwag po sana tayo magtulakan. Uh, ayun po, paumanin po kung mayroon technical difficulties. Pero bago po tayo mag-start, huwag po tayo magtulakan guys. Para may wasin po yung mga... So is he basically just explaining them that there's been a technical difficulties and that sorry about this and they're going to try and fix it? Did they ever actually perform the entire song? I'm sure that we're not going to be able to see it in the next 10 seconds. Nabarad na ba yung MVT sir ng alam? They're not skipping it. As much as I've been saying that I want to see stuff going wrong, it's really annoying, it's really frustrating for the boys, and they shouldn't have to put up with it. I think if you're going to invite an artist to perform somewhere, you need to ensure that you have the equipment and that, I know, I know, things go wrong even if you do all of that, but this is what sound checks are for. Um, it's just lucky that SB19 work as one. They're a really, really good team. I can imagine some quite young groups might really struggle in a situation like this. Um, but I also really love that they get a lot of their strength from 18. I don't know how big, I can't think off the top of my head how big SB19 would have been on the 30th of December 2019. But as I said too, I think 18 would have handled this. Um, but I just think that they're working through this now, ensuring that artists are treated with a little bit more respect. And going back to something I watched in a separate video today, um, them at Peepop Con, the fact that they were performing so late, not only is that really bad for their voices, um, but it, obviously the fans had to stay out late. Many of them missed uh, last buses, last trains back home, and everyone deserves better. And it's poor organisation and nobody, nobody, it doesn't matter whether you're a small up and coming artist or whether you're the biggest artist in this world, nobody should have to deal with that. I think that if you're putting on a show, safety, uh, equipment, well-being is should be at the forefront and it's just a shame that the boys had to go through this. I'm glad that it's been recorded and that I've been able to watch it. Love Goes, I would never have guessed, ever. I'm really glad that I watched that. There must have been at least nine mic changes in that. Has anyone actually counted? And they were so slick and so smooth. Um, and to see how they handled it in this situation as well. I have to say, Ken and Josh really got me here. Ken persisted through that and the way that Josh kind of guided them to stop and then communicated with the fans they're a real close-knit group and you feel safe with them they feel safe with us it's just such a wonderful place there's my speech <laughs> thank you so much for sharing this with me I know it took me a while to get here but it was impressive they always impress me so professional Thank you so much for sharing this with me and for watching it with me. I hope that you had fun. And until I see you next time, take care. Stay safe. Bye.